Bruh. Hey, Hammy here. Uh, today we're going to talk about part two of section 9.1, uh, in which we look at some people that influenced Darwin and what was his final uh, theory kind of laid out in a few simple steps. One of the first people to influence Darwin or that's often listed is Lamarck, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. Okay, he's a French naturalist uh, who looked at the diversity of living things and came up with this idea of species can change. So remember I said in the last video, Darwin was not the first person to mention the term evolve or evolution or things changing over time. Okay, Lamarck came up with a theory on the famous examples, Lamarck's giraffe. So, you know, what do giraffes eat? Leaves up on the tree. And so during their lifetime, they'll stretch and stretch and stretch their necks uh, to try to uh, get those leaves and they'll actually stretch their necks out as, as they reach for these leaves. And then they will pass those stretch necks on to their offspring. He called it inheritance of acquired characteristics. So something you acquire in your lifetime could be passed on to the offspring. Now, if you notice when this is, this is before we knew about DNA and genetics and some of the work Mendel was doing uh, around that time. Uh, we now know that this is not true. Okay, you can't, um, like if you get your little finger, pinky finger cut off, that doesn't mean your kids are not going to have their pinky finger. You say, well, Lamarck's theory was silly. Well, with what we know now, yes, but it was important to Darwin because there were other people out there proposing ideas of change over time or evolution, creatures changing. Okay, the second influence on Charles Darwin was Charles Lyell. He was a geologist. Uh, remember, geologists work with rocks and earth formations, uh, processes that shape our earth. He wrote a book, Principles of Geology. Uh, Darwin actually took this book with him on his uh, five-year travels on the HMS Beagle. And so when they were going from port to port, he was working with his specimens. He also had time to read this book. He was also influenced uh, by that book because uh, Lyle suggested that in order for all this stuff to happen, the earth must be millions of years old, not thousands. The kind of the popular belief at the time uh, was that the earth was only about six to 10,000 years old. Okay, and that was, uh, if you go back through the Bible and every day is 24 hours and you do all the genealogies and all that, uh, they came up with, depending on how you kind of calculate it, about six to 10,000 years old. And so Lyle was suggesting millions of years. Uh, this sort of hinted at Darwin that maybe, hey, there was enough time uh, for the earth and plants and animals to change over time from some of those fossils that he saw. Sure. Another person of influence for Darwin was Thomas Malthus. He was an English economist who wrote an essay on population. Uh, in there, he argued about how the population on Earth is growing faster than the resources they need. Food, water, living space, etc. Okay, sound familiar to today still, right? Uh, and he said that the human population will be held in check by wars, famine, disease, uh, things like that that will reduce the human population. Uh, Darwin did this, uh, took this idea and applied it to plants and animals and this idea of competition for survival or struggle, com pest, competition, can almost spell there, okay? Competition uh, where there's a struggle for existence and we're go they're going to be trying to get resources. Another thing, another thing Darwin noticed was this idea of artificial selection, okay? Uh, in other words, he saw humans selecting which plants and which animals to breed. Um, a lot of our modern agricultural plants, our food product plants, do not look like they used to, you know, thousands of years ago. They've been selectively bred uh, into what we see today. Uh, you know, he noticed dogs and all, you know, dog is, dogs, 
all the different variety of dogs that people have you know kind of bred different traits in them and over many 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 generations selecting for certain things getting all these different sizes and shapes of dogs another kind of funny popular thing at the time was fancy pigeons and people would breed for curly feathers these big puffy feathers under the nut neck or tail feathers or different colors and so he said hmm, if people can take uh, one species and select for certain traits and really make them pronounced uh, could this happen in nature? Could nature, uh, the, when they're competing for resources, uh, could they, you know, kind of select for certain traits? Could they be more helpful than others? Finally, one of the last influences on Darwin was another English naturalist by the name of Alfred Russell Wallace. Okay, he was actually in a different part of the world. Uh, he was over in Malaysia, India. Uh, Malaysia, so here you see the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, uh, Northern Australia. And so he was in a different part of the world where there was a great diversity of life and things very, very different than what they saw in England. Okay? And he came up with this idea of evolution through natural selection. Uh, and he started, he through the kind of scientific circles word, uh, got to Wallace that Darwin was talking about the similar things that he had come up with. And so he wrote letters to Darwin. And we think that it's actually some of these letters uh, kind of confirmed Darwin's thinking at the time because it was kind of controversial, uh, this idea uh, that the Earth's millions of years old, that things could evolve and it wasn't a special creation. And so uh, this kind of gave Darwin the confidence to sort of put forth his uh, theory of evolution. Okay, Darwin's theory goes a little something like this. I tried to break it down into six easy steps. Okay, number one, he says species change over time. Okay, looking at the fossils, uh, things are not the same as they were, not everything is the same as it were, was in the past. Uh, this idea kind of comes from Lamarck, change over time, this idea of evolving. Uh, number two, uh, Lyle mentioned that, you know, hinted that the earth was millions of years old. If earth and life is very old, that old, millions or billions of years old, this gave enough time for evolution to produce kind of the diversity of life that we see on our globe today, on our little ball of rock we call home. Uh, and number three, those living things uh, repopulate, produce offspring uh, faster than their, you know, than they need their resources. And so this overproduction of offspring leads for competition or a struggle for existence. Okay, this idea again is from Malthus, the population guy, the economist. Okay, so this struggle for existence, so drafts reproduce, they have a bunch of baby drafts. Okay, there's going to be variation there's going to be variation in those baby drafts, okay? And they're going to be competing for these tree leaves up here for this resource. And some of them are going to be better at getting that resource than others, okay? Which is kind of what I was just talking about here, step number four, this variation, okay? Obviously, the drafts with the longer necks, okay, then naturally, they're not stretching them out like Lamarck said and making them longer. The ones, if you look around, all of us are naturally different heights, that variation from polygenic traits. Uh, this giraffe that has the longer neck will be more successful getting the leaves, okay? If they're more successful, guess what? They are going to reproduce more, okay, because they have more resources. So there's going to be more and more longer necked giraffes. Okay, this is the idea that Darwin put forth of fitness, the organism's ability to survive, to get those resources, and then have offspring pass on those traits, okay? This is what he termed, again, natural selection, okay? Nature, the resources are determining, okay, which of these are going to be better able to survive, okay? And then over time, over many, 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 many years, we're going to see maybe even the evolution of a new species or what we call speciation, which we'll look at in a future video. Okay, Darwin put forth these ideas in a book in 1859 called On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, in which he laid out his case 
for evolution. And it quickly became a hot seller. It was controversial. Uh, Darwin actually waited about 25 years after he got back from his trip on the HMS Beagle. Uh, Cause again, <clears throat> these ideas, these ideas were very revolutionary and, but it quickly, people wanted to read this, uh, became very popular and became a bestseller. Uh, and there still are some of these original copies out there. Uh, this is a, a, a picture of one of those um, in which he put forth those steps, those ideas uh, that we just kind of went over. And this began kind of the ball rolling uh, for this idea of evolution and how it helps in biology sort of helps uh, everything sort of fit together or tie together.